G'day, this is Nick Bowditch. Uh, welcome to episode four of the Reboot Your Thinking podcast. This is the podcast that reimagines mindset, mindfulness, and mental health from the perspective of somebody who gives and gets therapy. Uh, it's really nice to have you here today. Thanks for joining us. This topic is overcoming perfectionism and embracing imperfection. So, I know that this is a big topic for a lot of people, certainly for a lot of people I know um, personally as well as professionally. People who are my clients struggle with perfectionism quite a bit. Uh, I know that it's something that's pretty kind of, even though it's broadly out there, it's kind of misunderstood too. And there's a there's a there's a bit of a division between people who do live with this stuff and people who do not, um, which makes it really hard also to for the people who do live with it to kind of get their head around that. Um, and I'm actually doing this topic this week because of a submission that I had a question from one of our listeners, which is awesome. Uh, her name is Gail and she asked, I wrote it down so I didn't mess it up. Gail asked, what is, a, what is perfectionism and how can it be a bad thing to try to be really great at something and not make any mistakes? And, you know, on the face of it, Gail, it does sound pretty stupid to talk that down and pretty... Uh, pretty harsh on people to say oh you know don't try and be great don't try and be excellent but that's not what perfectionism is that's not when it becomes a debilitating issue and that's what we'll talk to um, today about so thank you so much for your message Gail and if any of you guys have a message you would like a question or a message you would like um, answered uh, on Spotify you can click on message and and leave a voice message and then I'll, I'll play your voice message on the podcast that where we answer that question or you can just hit me up across the socials at at Nick Bowditch across all the socials. Um, okay, so what is perfectionism? Perfectionism is the tendency to strive for flawlessness and high standards in yourself or in the work that you produce or the things you create and it's often, often kind of accompanied by a critical evaluation of your own performance and a fear of making mistakes or falling short of expectations. Um, it can manifest itself in different areas of life, including uh, your relationships, both employment and personal relationships, in your work, uh, in academics, definitely, um, in creative pursuits. Um, and it can lead to a range of kind of negative consequences like anxiety, um, self-doubt, procrastination, and burnout. And just, you know, going, well, stuff this, I, I, I can't achieve the perfect result, so I'm not going to achieve a result at all. Um, so, and just sort of, I, I guess, in... in uh, in response, direct response to Gail's question, well, having high standards and trying to make really great things and trying to make no mistakes can be a positive trait. Perfectionism becomes problematic when it interferes with your ability to enjoy your life, to pursue meaningful goals and to maintain healthy relationships. So it's not, it's not a problem. Like there's a difference between striving for excellence and perfectionism. Striving for excellence is fine and, and great. Like it should be encouraged, you know. But when it becomes, when you weaponize that against yourself, as in any kind of addiction or, or process that becomes unhealthy, then that is dangerous. That is a problem. That is problematic. It's something that you that we have to work on. Otherwise, it can lead, as I said, to all sorts of things: anxiety, burnout, depression and different um, psychological issues down the track. So that's what we're going to talk about today because perfectionism can have drastic, really, effects on on mental health and and not in a positive way. So let's let's answer a few different questions that come up regularly about perfectionism when I'm working with clients and and when I'm just talking about it on stage and different things. So um, these are the questions that that I think cover the spectrum of, of what perfectionism, perfectionism is and how it can hurt us down the track. So what causes it? What causes perfectionism? Um, there's a, it's usually a combination of things rather than just one, but each on that list of things that it could be includes pressure from society, you know, to fill a certain role or to be a certain way or to get a certain mark or... Um, 
to work to a certain standard or whatever. So societal pressure is a big one. Family expectations is a big one, particularly depending on, on different cultural representations. You know, it can be really, um, really difficult not to, you know, to not live up to certain standards and expectations of one's family. And so you try really, 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 really hard not to make any mistakes and to be, be the best. And, you know, it bites you on the bum when it turns into perfectionism. So that's another one. And then internal pressures. So sometimes, you know, I, I've, I've worked with a couple of um, clients who are perfectionists and their family environment, their parents, their siblings, uh, do not have that um, trait at all. And so it's not like they're in this pressure cooker family where they must achieve and they must excel. Um, they just have that internal pressure and that can be as a result of all sorts of different things and trauma can certainly be one of those things. But um, internal pressures are, is, is definitely a standalone, uh, can be a standalone um, symptom or, or reason, factor, I guess, um, that contributes to perfectionism, perfectionism. I can't even say it. That would annoy the perfectionist, definitely. Um, it can also be a coping mechanism for, for anxiety and, and insecurity generally. You know, if, if somebody lives with a generalized anxiety or a very specific trauma-based anxiety, then to be perfect can actually be a bit of a coping mechanism. And, and I, I find this quite a bit in, in the, the trauma work that I do with clients that for whatever reason, the perfectionism is in them to a point where they not only have to be the best version of themselves or whatever, but they really want to be my best client. They want to be the best, you know, this, not necessarily the sickest or anything else, but like try the hardest and make sure I know they're trying the hardest and, and you know, all that sort of stuff. And I don't care about that. You know, I, 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 I mean, I care that they try hard, but I don't care in comparison to other clients or other people. So sometimes it can be a very limiting thing in that way as well. And the other thing is that it can also be linked uh, and there's some data and research, lots of research on this actually, that links it to uh, complex PTSD and, and complex trauma, where um, even to the point where the perfect result is being chased to win the approval of the person who has been the abuser in a traumatic relationship or a traumatic um, family dynamic before. It can be really messed up in that way. And um, so, yeah, that's why it's not just striving for excellence and that's why it's important to delve into these things further and to make sure that they don't turn into, you know, perfectionism and the, the many different um, dangers that come from those things as well. So the next question would be, what are the downsides of it then, you know? Um, and and I, I, I know that we just sort of talked about a few of those, but... but Let's be really specific about it, right? So number one is anxiety. Like there's, anxiety is the biggest downside of, of uh, perfectionism because it can just be the trigger and the result. You know, uh, it can lead, what, it, it can be what leads someone into perfectionism as well as the result of it. And so it's, it's this never ending trauma circle of anxiety is really painful for people and really difficult to get out of. Depression also can come out of it, you know, when you just can't achieve, when you just can't make yourself vulnerable enough to be imperfect. Um, it can it can lead to that. Uh, it can lead to burnout, where you just go, where you just put your hands in the air and go, well, I can't, I can't do it anymore. If I can't do it perfect, I'm not doing it at all. Um, procrastination, where you just, and and procrastination is an interesting topic in itself because. A lot of people put things off until the last minute, but procrastination is that pathological, all right, I'm, I, I know I have to do those things, but I'm not going to do them. I'm, I'm just going to keep putting them off until I absolutely have to do them or I don't have to do them anymore and someone else does them or, or whatever. So it's not just putting things off until the last minute. It can be a lot deeper and a lot more complex than that. Um, Self-criticism is another downside of it. You know, we... I talk a lot on here about self-talk and how we speak about ourselves to ourselves. Um, and that self-criticism can definitely be the downside of perfectionism. If you're, if you're trying to create something perfectly and you can't do it, then, it, then the very first person you're going to blame for that is yourself. Um, and it can be very, very limiting to the point where you just will never achieve that perfectionism anyway, but you'll still keep trying, you know. Um, 
perfectionism can hold people back from achieving their goals really and, and living fulfilling lives. And one of the other downsides of perfectionism that isn't spoken about much is addiction. And there is definite links between perfectionism and addiction and, and both as a coping mechanism as well as a lead-in um, primary addiction source that, that, that you know, um, when, a, when a mind is so concentrated on being the best at something and they can't be, there's a way to feel that as well as a way to punish ourselves for that. And that's where both, that's where addicting agents come into both of those um, sides of it. So it can be very, very dangerous. So what are the benefits then of embracing imperfection? And, and I know that, you know, um, when I was in rehab, we, they talk about being perfectly imperfect. And, it, and it's, a real, um, it's a real great way to sort of live your life and to, to aim at having your life at being perfectly imperfect. So be as good as you can be, but know that you're always going to be imperfect, that none of us are perfect. And, you know, to be as close to that as you can be and to be content with what you are is really, really important. Um, when you embrace imperfection, uh, it gives you a chance to increase your self-compassion. So, you know, uh, we spoke in the last um, uh, podcast I did about resilience that self-compassion is the thing that triggers resilience. And, and so if, we, if we're going to need resilience down the track, then, then we're going to need self-compassion now. Um, so that's a really important sort of first step. Uh, that's what gets increased when we embrace our imperfection. Um, it can reduce our anxiety and reduce our stress. Uh, it can increase creativity and innovation. You know, I, I often talk about there being no, no creativity without vulnerability. And if we're not making ourselves vulnerable, if we can't do that because we're, we're striving for perfection, we can't get that, we don't want to be imperfect, we don't want to be vulnerable to that, then that's going to obviously affect you know, whether we can um, stay away from perfectionism, whether we can be content, whether we can be happy. You know? And then the final thing, the final benefit, I guess, of embracing imperfection is that it ends up in improved relationships with others. Because... One thing about perfectionists is it's, it's one thing to expect that of yourself and to drive that in yourself and to strive constantly to be perfect, f f you know, in the futile chase to be perfect. But often, sometimes it can be it can also leak into our relationships relationships with others, which makes it difficult as well, because nobody wants to be with that guy. Nobody wants to be. Um, uh, have the expectations set so ridiculously high that they'll never achieve it and then be punished for it when they don't. So you definitely improve relationships and, and have better relationships with other people and friendships with other people once you can embrace your own imperfection. The next question is, what are some strategies for overcoming perfectionism? Now, I'm going to give you 10 really good tips to take away this week as I always do at the end. But just before we get there, you know, um, setting realistic goals is a good way to sort of chip away at the imperfection, realistic goals that you can track the progress of and then celebrate victories along the way, the little wins along the way. That's one thing. Reframing negative self-talk. Again, you know, it's, it's no kind of secret that's a big thing for me and, and it's something I'll talk about most weeks really because I think it's the key to so many things. How you speak about yourself to yourself is, is much more important than how you speak about yourself to others or how others speak about you. So that's um, a, a big strategy for overcoming it. Um, practicing self-compassion, obviously, because then you can be more resilient for a start. But self-compassion is just a good thing anyway. Um, and it can actually let you off the hook if you don't achieve perfectionism in whatever you're striving to be. It can be the first step that kind of breaks that down a bit and dilutes that down a bit. Focusing on the process rather than the outcome is an important strategy, you know, um, done is better than perfect is something that I kind of live by and and I, I work with a lot of small business people and a lot of entrepreneurial people and and they are very much focused on it has to be finished and has to be perfect before I'll put it out there and uh, and you know it's just not true the, if you put out version 1.0 then version 1.1 once the market gets to look at it and starts to twiddle around and make it a bit better give you feedback and whatever then it's going to 1.1 is going to be way better than 1.0 so anyway that's focusing on the process rather than the outcome is 
is, is an obvious one for me um, because I straddle the work of both working with business clients, like in the coaching sort of system, uh, the coaching sort of environment and the therapeutic environment as well, even though they're mostly both <laughs> of those things anyway. Self-reflection is another one. You know, if you engage, engage in self-reflection and introspection, so look, looking within yourself to identify your own perfectionistic tendencies, understand where they come from, what are the triggers of these things, why does it, what does it mean, why do you need it to be perfect, all, all of those things um, are really good strategies in order to overcome it, you know, just to be, make yourself aware of those things can be really helpful. And then ways to sort of boost your self-reflection then, if you were staying on that tack for a bit, is to um, include journaling in your daily routine, um, Speaking to a therapist obviously can help you with that, but yeah, there's there's a lot of good stuff that comes out of an increased introspection and increased self reflection um, that can help you to overcome perfectionism. And then the last question in this bit is, well, how does mindset intersect with with imp- with uh, perfectionism then? And there's a few ways really a- accepting mistakes as opportunities for growth and learning. You know, instead of just accepting or not accepting a mistake, but just experiencing a mistake and knowing what and saying, well, yeah, I'm a fuck up. That's why I do that. I always do that. That's that's that growth and fixed mindset we've talked about before on here. Um, You know, if you can accept that mistakes that you've made are opportunities for you to grow from and to learn something from, then, you know, that's that's a great sort of change in your mindset. And that's a way that mindset can change perfectionism. Another way is by embracing vulnerability and, um, you know, to really be less conscious of what could happen if somebody knows that you're not perfect. And the, and the great way to realize that is to realize that everybody already knows you're imperfect because everybody is, you know, like there's no such thing as the ideal perfection in humans, we're always going to make mistakes. We're always going to push and strive for something we, we're not perfect at. And that's the great part about being human. So to embrace vulnerability is actually a really helpful tool in order to um, yeah, move, move away from perfectionism, move, perf- move towards being perfectly imperfect. And then the last one is to let go of the need for external validation. So many of us are still trying to get our um, esteem from outside, esteem from external factors, from people, from places, from things, from having a nice car, from having money, from having a nice home, having a nice pair of shoes, whatever it might be, right? And so once we can let go of the need for that and instead search for an ability to draw our esteem more from within, then we're going to be accept being perfectly imperfect um, a lot more readily. So today's academic paper that goes along with perfectionism, so each, each one of these sessions I am going to include a peer-reviewed scientific paper for you to maybe have a look at or at least just learn from the, from the results of or the, or the findings of um, because I want it, this to be evidence-based. I don't just want it to be me rambling on about stuff that I think. So the paper this week uh, is entitled The Relationship Between Perfectionism and Mental Health, uh, a meta-analysis. So a meta-analysis just means that the authors looked at lots of different studies. In this case, it was 53 different studies. And they then create a study out of all of those and sort of summarize it. Um, This is a paper from 2021, so it's fairly recent. And it's from the Journal of uh, Psychiatry and Behavioral Science. Um, Again, I'll put the link and the description of the paper in the show notes. So if you want to check it out, you can do that. This paper is really handy. This paper is really good because it's a meta-analysis for a start. So it shows, you know, uh, lots and lots of different findings. Um, This one had, as I said, 53 studies and the total sample size was over 22,000 people. So that's a big collection of people and a big collection of data. Um, and it really examines the relationship between perfectionism and mental health. Now, I mean, it's kind of a given, I guess, that perfectionism isn't great for your mental health. But anyway, this paper investigated that to a, to a granular level and um, 
including a, ra- a whole range of sort of mental health outcomes um, that are made worse by perfectionism, including depression, anxiety, stress, um, and just kind of overall psychological distress, you know. And it, and it found that perfectionism is significantly associated with, um, with those negative mental health outcomes. So not just positively associated, not just associated, but significantly associated. So there's very, very little doubt and very little scientific sort of backing that there is no link between perfectionism and, and, and a disturbed mental health and mental illnesses. So if you're someone who lives with perfectionism and you're not investigating that for the benefit of your own mental health, um, or if you are living with perfectionism and a mental illness, then you know it might be uh, helpful for you. You might get some benefit from speaking to a therapist or a mental health professional and just looking into that and seeing if what can happen because it's not going to get better. As this paper says, you know the longitudinal nature of that doesn't get any better; it only gets worse um, for for as long as those traits are in place. That perfectionism is in place. This, this study also found that maladaptive aspects of perfectionism, so that the ways that, uh, in other words, the way that people deal with their perfectionism in a way that's not healthy or a way that's not positive, so like concern over mistakes and doubts over their actions, um, inability to make decisions, uh, procrastination, as we talked about before, has a stronger association with mental health outcomes than adaptive aspects such as you know high personal standards or just being organized so back to gail's question you know how can it be a bad thing to try to be perfect well this this study showed with a huge sample size that there is a much stronger association with mental health with mental uh, poor mental health outcomes when there's maladaptive processes than just comparing you know somebody who tries really hard so yeah that's that um and then, you know, it, it sort of just reinforces, this paper reinforces really the notion of embracing imperfection and cultivating that self-compassion for, um, for our mental health and our overall well-being. Um, it's, yeah, there's a bit of jargon in this one too, I guess, but, it, but if, you, if you just read the, the abstract and the conclusion, you'll get a lot from that, particularly if you're somebody who lives with perfectionism and wants to make some changes, uh, some positive changes in your life before it really starts to be maladaptive and really starts to hurt you um, and others who are, who are trying to help you in your life as well. All right, so this is the final section, the 10 tips that I want you to take this week if you are somebody who lives with perfectionism and go and cultivate and work out and uh, and try to put in place so that you um, can be the better best very best version of yourself without this stuff hanging over your head going forward number one recognize the difference between healthy striving and perfectionism right so perfectionism is, is the unhealthy and unattainable standard while healthy striving focuses on personal growth and your development self-development and just trying to be trying to be great right there's a big big difference between those two things one's maladaptive and one is very you know productive um and and being able to differentiate between those two and having the self-awareness to recognize the difference between those two is going to help you going forward number two identify the root causes cause or causes of your perfectionism right so recognize the underlying factors that fuel your perfectionism like external pressures internal pressures family expectations, past experiences, whatever it is. If you can identify the root cause of it, then you can work on it. Uh, if, you can't, if you can't do that initially, then, then speak with a therapist and they'll be able to help you do that. That's something that we do very well and, and often. But often, honestly, you, you really know what this thing is anyway. You know it's the, oh, it's the pressure my parents put on me or it's the pressure I put on myself so that I could be the best child or whatever, you know, whatever it might be, you'll be aware of it most probably, but identifying it and calling it out and writing on it, right? Meditating on it or journaling on that um, will definitely be helpful for you going forward this week. Number three, practice self-compassion. One of my favorite things, treat yourself with kindness, um, forgiveness, understand when you make mistakes or fall short of your goals. Um, Give yourself a break. 
you know uh that that's the, that's the real message here is you're not your mistakes right you're not your negative actions they are things that you've done and things that have happened to you but that's not who you are you have your own identity so try to try to give yourself some self-compassion and you'll be able to see that stuff and and start moving forward and before set realistic goals Break down the large goals into smaller achievable steps. You've heard me say this a few times probably. You know, it's, uh, big goals down to small goals. Track your progress. Celebrate your wins. Um, I think this is a really important kind of thing uh, that makes you more flexible with your expectations but also makes it more likely that you can celebrate the great stuff you do without it having to be perfect in, in order to celebrate it. Number five, reframe your negative self-talk. Another thing I bang on a lot about, challenge your inner critic by questioning the evidence from your negative thoughts and replacing them with more positive and realistic ones. Um, there's very little, when, when I work with my clients and they say, they tell me how they speak about themselves or what they say to themselves, their self-talk, it's very, I can't think of a time where I haven't been able to reframe that into something a lot more positive and a lot more beneficial. So. Um, again, if you can't do that yourself, then reach out to somebody else who can help you. But yeah, practicing uh, reframing of negative self-talk is, is a super important one. Number six, embrace vulnerability. So reorganize your vulnerability um, into something that you realize is a natural part of the human experience uh, and something that allows us to connect with ourselves on a deeper level. You know, it's a very superficial thing not to be able to recognize your vulnerability or show it or, uh, you know, be vulnerable in any way. You just get in the top level of people all the time, um, which kind of isn't great compared to the rest of the good stuff that's underneath. So, um, you know, embracing your vulnerability is going to be a good thing for you this week. Number seven, focus on the pro uh, process, sorry, not the outcome. Uh, done is better than perfect, right? Emphasize the journey rather than the destination for yourself. Uh, appreciate the progress you make along the way. Celebrate your little wins. These are important. Number eight, practice self-care. Another thing that's a theme through everything that I talk about, it seems, but taking care of your physical um, health, your emotional health, your mental well-being, and doing that through exercise, through healthy eating, through relaxation techniques, journaling, meditation, Positive social interactions, having, having good times with friends and family, all those things are really helpful for practicing self-care, which is also helpful for getting you back towards the perfectly imperfect and away from perfectionism. Number nine, seek support. So, you know, talk to a trusted friend, a family member, um, someone who you can rely on, who you, you know isn't going to judge you and hold your space for you. Um, or, or a mental health professional if you don't have that or even as well as that about your perfectionism and explore some strategies, you know, for overcoming that. Um, yeah, it's obviously a big one for me to tell you, but yeah, I, uh, I totally believe in that. And then the final one is to celebrate imperfection, right? Recognize that imperfection is a normal part of our experience as human beings and, and also that it can really lead to some growth you know, it can lead to self-development, it can lead to creativity, it can lead to innovation. It's not the, it's not the be all and end all. You're not going to, you know, die from being imperfect. In fact, you're going to live, you're going to sort a lot of things out that you wouldn't have been able to otherwise. You're going to learn a lot that you wouldn't have been able to otherwise. And I, I can't recommend enough the striving to be perfectly imperfect as opposed to just striving to be flat out perfect. You're always going to disappoint yourself. It's always going to hurt. And you're going to drive the people around you really mad, you know, and because all they want for you is to recognize your worth and all you want is to increase your worth all the time. Um, and you might just miss out on some really good stuff along the way. All right, so that's, uh, that's my tips for this week to uh, embrace imperfection and to sort of defeat uh, perfectionism as much as we can. Um, if you have any questions at all, please hit me up on all the socials. I'm at Nick Bowditch across all the socials. On the, shot, on the Spotify landing page, you can click on message and you can leave a voice message there for me, which I'll feature in the next um, podcast, in a future podcast, if you want to do that. If you want to ask me any questions or set a theme for any of these, then please do so. And I'll, I'm happy to do the research, find a paper and bang on about it for a bit. 
for you. All right, I hope you're having a great day wherever you are. Um, let's strive to be perfectly imperfect this week. All right, Peru.